Yes or no? I was actually thinking that we go to the Nari Institute and I meet the DG, we have a discussion and we sign and it will be done, but this has turned into a national function. And, uh, and for all the right reasons, I must say, um, the, the passion that I have seen in, in the minister uh, very clearly showing the way in terms of the fact that signing papers is only one thing, but let's do the job and let's harvest that rice. And I think once, once the, the government uh, ministers and the prime minister, the secretaries, when they have the drive and when they have the passion behind that drive, uh, nothing can stop you. So I can very clearly see that in the next 10 years, uh, PNG is going to have its rice, most of it homegrown, and uh, hopefully with no imports coming in after hey. 10 years. <coughs> and, and we have seen that. Iri has had a history of seeing that happen, uh, starting with countries like even Korea, for example. In fact, if I can say so, uh, there is almost seems, seems like there is a protocol for, for Korea uh, diplomats and bureaucrats when they visit IRI. The first thing they like to say is that in the 70s, uh, Korea was receiving development aid in the late 60s and 70s. And now Korea is actually giving out $45 billion worth of uh, develop, development aid to different countries. And they say the reason for that is the rice we got from Iri. So, and that is one big example where the basic aspect of existence comes into being, which is when your stomach is full, then your brain can be more active and think of other things to do. Um, and, and that has been the story in Vietnam, in Thailand, in India, in China, in Bangladesh now recently, Bangladesh has recently uh, achieved self-sufficiency. Indonesia has achieved self-sufficiency. So it's a work in progress, but IRI has been with these countries all the time in the last nearly 62 years now. Uh, IRI was established in 1960 uh, by Ford Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation. It has been supported by many development agencies and multilateral agencies around the world. But the biggest difference now is that the rice growing countries themselves are supporting the research and inviting IRI, just like PNG has uh, invited IRI to strike that collaboration and make that difference. Um, and you would think that when the Green Revolution happened in the 1960s with the short statured rice, um, you know, what is the role of IRI after that? You know, we should have been able to hand over most of the technologies to the national systems. But science does not stop, and science continues in terms of what it can deliver. So now it is not just about productivity, it is about grain quality as well. There are a number of countries that are self-sufficient in their rice demands for their national needs. A number of them are exporting that. Uh, but now it's about grain quality. And malnutrition, for example, even in countries that are self-sufficient, countries like India, like Bangladesh, uh, needs to be addressed. And it is now on a different tra trajectory. While we are still working heavily on increasing the productivity, we are now working on making sure that the rice grain has more minerals, has more protein, has more resistant starch. And the way it is going, I can tell you in the next 10 years, rice will be the healthiest staple because it will have more protein, more minerals, more resistant starch, and it will be of low glycemic index. We have recently also achieved that. 
And there is no reason why we can't bring all of that to Papua New Guinea. Uh, with the passion that we have seen here today, with the drive that the government has behind trying to make sure that all the rice that is needed by the country is homegrown, there is no reason why it cannot be done with the technologies that do exist now. Uh, if we can do it with other countries, I'm sure we can do it with PNG. IRI is here to support you all the way through. Thank you. But if I can add, it is not just IRI that, that will come to support you. Um, the CGIR, the, uh, uh, the Consultative Group on International Agricultural Research, which is our umbrella organization, has 14 other <coughs> institutes like IRI. Uh, you may have heard of some of them. Um, and two of them are within Asia, which is the Water Management Institute and the Fisheries Institute. And we would like to come with an integrated solution of not just about growing rice and producing more rice, but what does it need to make sure that we have effective irrigation systems? What does it mean to perhaps grow your shrimp and fish in the rice paddies as well. Uh, and those kind of integrated <coughs> solutions are the need of the time. Uh, the crop rotation with soybean, which has been mentioned. Uh, again, there are institutes that can help with that. So the CGIR can come uh, in its total capacity to support an integrated solution to PNG. But starting with the signing of the MOA, uh, IRI is now decided to start work immediately with PNG to try and bring some of the rice varieties, as uh, Dr. Sajay mentioned, the brown plant hopper, for example, in rice is a big problem. I can tell you, sir, we have rice which is tolerant to brown plant hopper, and, and that can come to uh, We have done a lot of work on drought tolerance, and that, that needs to be improved. We need to assess what kind of drought uh, PNG experiences, because drought can be of many different kinds, actually, uh, depending on the growth stage of the rice where it hits the, uh, the crop. The solutions can be different. The varieties used can be different. And so having an understanding, having a baseline information on what does rice mean to PNG, not just in terms of consumption, but in terms of growing it, the agronomy behind it, all of that is an ex extremely important aspect to understand. And we will start doing that at, in PNG and start bringing the right varieties. And I see no reason why in 10 years PNG will not be a rice self-sufficient country. I thank you all once again. And uh, uh, let's hope, as, as we have all said, uh, God will be with us, the Lord will be with us in this, in this endeavor, and we will succeed. Thank you again. So we've signed the MOU. So what next? Where do we go from here? As we have heard tonight, the passion, the dream, the vision of this government is in order. Because of that dream and the passion that they have, leaving no one behind, making sure every Papua New Guineans are well fed, by 2050, <coughs> we will have smart and healthy population. And given the dream that we have um, in Region 2050, what can RISE do? What can RISE contribute to the transformation and to the outcomes of Region 2050? After the signing that we have done, Nari and Iri will sit together and scope out key priority interventions that will take place. An action plan will be developed after this. A team of IRI scientists, team of NARI scientists will sit together and will think out through and develop the action plan in which they will look at low hanging fruit to start off. NARI here he has some rice varieties um, that they have used in countries like Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, Laos, 
Cambodia to a vet tonight. That he will bring those varieties into the country and partner with Nari and we start planting rice. And we make sure that this rice that we, we plant will have to scale up. And in order for us to plant rice, first of all, we must understand the environment in which rice can be grown, <coughs> upland, paddy. Much of the study and data is available. Erie scientists and other scientists will sit together, understand this, and start planting rice with the varieties they will bring in. We have seen a similar approach in the last four years. They have done, Iri has done work with <coughs> Bangladesh. Within seven years, they have transformed from mass importation of rice to now an export country. And uh, we are looking at a similar approach to bring what Iri has done with Bangladesh to bring into Papua New Guinea so that we can continue to work <coughs> in a similar strategy and fashion to grow rice. We have heard tonight from the Director General that with rice, even though we have a lot of rain in the country, water management is key. We will partner with the Institute of Water Management in Sri Lanka to, in which ERI has played a critical role in it, bring them in to write up a water policy water management policy for the country. And that water management policy for agriculture, for irrigation, must take place because we don't have one in the country. The next phase that we will, with the variety that we have, we want to make sure we come up with a national seed policy. So that when we have rice, certified seeds must be used. You cannot get a rice seed from somewhere in the bush or after growing and you start getting excited and planting. You will not get the yield you will from there. You must always come back to Nari and get the certified seeds to plant rice to get higher yield. We have seen in the country through Nari trials, Dr. Saji Ban, the former director general will attest, will also <coughs> Proof that our rice in a country, the varieties that we have, can give us up to seven to eight tons per hectare. So we'd like to see such a variety that we bring in, bring in with Erie to be more certified. That is why a national seed policy in the country must be developed for us. Otherwise, as we have heard, the missionaries have brought in rice, different varieties that will come. When different varieties come in, they will confuse, intermarry and come, and then they will give an inferior. We must make sure that quality seeds are delivered to our farmer, and this is a gap, the national rice seed policy to be developed in the country, and we have to do that together with the irrigation policy so that it's possible for us now to upscale it into commercial. So this government's vision of commercialization into special economic zones, um, those areas that the government is talking about must have policy to drive it. Without that policy, we cannot just drive anything. That is why our Minister for Agriculture will be the minister that will make sure that seed policy is there, irrigation policy is there, so that you will drive it into the special economic zones for commercialization. Thank you, Minister, for taking passion. We know that the government only will support us to make it happen. In Bangladesh, the government was right behind it, putting in funding and the commercialization of rice. That's how the rice has taken off to what they are today, they are exporting rice. And we believe in a similar fashion, as we work with IRI, uh, the ministers and the, the government will be well informed to making sure that we achieve that target. And with that, thank you. Um, Tonight, thank you, Dr. Sec uh, Secretary, for the hard work it has done on the National Agriculture Sector Plan. And the Secretary has uh, mentioned to us that NARI will play a pivotal role in the coordination of research across the country. Thank you, Secretary. <laughs> uh, 
is the wisdom of the uh, Maraparoso government to bring Nari back from DS to the agriculture sector. And we are under our minister now, and we are happy to roll with his dream and vision during his term. And thank you so much for the occasion. Media, we acknowledge your presence in small and little location like this. No one seems to be worried about, but we are speaking to Papua New Guinea that tonight will be a well-remembered 10 years down the line.